All right, guys. Welcome to another episode of Brand Academy. Okay, with your hosts again. I am Mr. Wins Twin. My name is Brand, and he gave me a short notice that he needs a video done for the new chapter you guys are on, which is on similarities. Okay, he told me you guys finished the first part of your notes. So right now we're just going to do the second part, okay? So again, like usual, just like the last time, if I ask you guys to pause, please pause the video and attempt the problems on your own, okay? And so right now, I'm just going to read the question here. We're on the, the back side of the notes, right? And so let me end this full screen. So it says, determine whether each pair of figures is similar. If so, write the similarity statement and scale factor. Okay, so for number one here, it's pretty simple just by looking at the figure. Okay, so we kind of see how the figure on the left here, all of them are congruent. Okay, all these angles here, right? They're all congruent to each other. And so we know that the two properties be similar, right? The two properties in order shapes to be similar is one, all angles have to be congruent and two all, oops, that's better. all sides are proportional okay so these two statements have to be fulfilled in order for two figures to be similar so just looking here you can always see that the angles are not all congruent so this is no not similar. Let me just put all angles are not congruent. Okay. And so, just even a little throwback from last week, right? What are the angles of these right here? What are the angle values, right? If we recall back, right, how many sides does this shape have? It's a pentagon, so n equals 5. So I'm going to plug it into my equation here. 5 minus 2 times 180. And we should get 540. And then we divide that by the number of angles, which is our n. In this case, is 5. So each of these angles is 108 degrees. right? And of course, just looking over here, this is 90 degrees. So we know that the angles are not congruent okay mathematically speaking as well okay so right here if you guys want to pause the video okay, and do this on your own I believe only four period needs to do this so because fourth period I forgot I mean I forgot Mr. Wynn said um, during fourth period he forgot his his like connecting thing to connect his laptop to the projector okay so if you're on if you're in period four pause it do this problem everyone else in this and we skip over to the next part of the video. All right, so this should be unpaused. Okay, so looking at this figure here, right, we're trying to see if these two figures are similar, right? The smaller one and the bigger triangle here, okay? In this case, triangle SPR and triangle Q. Now, to check if they're similar, right, just by looking at the angle markings, we know all the angles are congruent, so that is good. And now to check for the size to be proportional, we can see how comparing ST, on, let me just put ST over QR, right, that would be... 22 over 11, which is 2 over 1, okay? Now, even just looking at the sides here, right? With these two tick marks here, this is just saying that SP is going to be double QP, right? So we already know that ratio itself is also 2 to 1. So in this case, yes, these triangles are similar. Okay, because all the ratios are 2 to 1. 
keep in mind if I wanted to state that triangle QPR to triangle SPR, the scale factor will be different. Okay, the scale factor for this case, QPR, right? I'll be using QR over ST instead. So this would be 11 over 22, which is 1 over 2. Okay, so the answer to this it is yes, it is similar. Okay, so now moving on. Go right here. Okay, use similar figures. Okay, you can use scale factors and proportions to find the missing links and similar polygons. Okay, so now we're on to the why, right? Why are we using similar figures? What's the point? Okay, we're gonna be using it to be able to find the missing sides of other shapes. Okay, so right here in this example, uh, just right now, just kind of number this. The order is kind of weird, but it's kind of make sure you go number one here, number two, number three, number four. Okay. So you're given these two polygons, and they actually tell you, hey, these two polygons are similar. So find X and Y. Okay, so looking at part one right here, it says use the congruent angles to write the corresponding vertices in order and similarity statement. Okay, so in this case, we can just match up the angles easily. Angle R is congruent to angle M. Angle S is congruent to angle N. And then angle T is congruent to angle P. Okay. Let me fix this. All right, and then the similarity statement that we want, it could be really, the first one could be any order you want, just as long as you match it up with the second triangle. So RST, that's the, that should match it to M and P. Yeah. Okay, so part two, this is where it gets important. Okay, what is the scale factor of triangle RST to triangle M and P? So again, RST, right? So we should be listing this part first, okay? So this part should be first, this part should be second, okay? So RST, we can just pick any side we want. Let's say I pick 32, and 32 should match up with 36, right? So in this case, the scale factor, I'll put SF, should equal 32 over 16, which is 2 over Okay, so that is my scale factor. So again, we know that similar figures, all sides are in proportion. So to find my x, I'm going to be using the scale factor. So coming over to number 3, right, the scale factor again is 2 over 1. Okay, so 2 over 1, and now we want to be able to solve for, let's say, x, right? So to solve for x right here, this matches up with this side over here. So we know x should be on top because our scale factor is used with triangle RST first. Triangle RST and then triangle MNP. Okay, so this should be x over 13. Cross multiply and solve for this. x should equal 26. And now for y, right, it's the same idea for y. The scale factor is still 2 over 1. And I'll make this in green. So for y, we're starting with 38. We're going to y. This time, y is at the bottom, okay, because now y is on the second shape. So again, once you cross multiply, and then your y should equal 19, okay? Now for step four, okay, something a bit different. Now we're not talking about just one side. We're talking about all the sides. We're talking about the perimeter. Okay, so it asks us to find the perimeter of those two triangles. 
you're going to have triangle RST is equal so the perimeter to that see P perimeter of triangle RST is 32 plus 26 plus 38 that should equal 96 and the perimeter for I just call this perimeter 1 up here. It's perimeter 2. So perimeter 2 for triangle M and P should equal 16 plus 13 plus 19, which equals 48. Okay, so those are your two perimeters. And now I'd ask you guys to write it as a ratio, okay? Ratio. So if you compare these two perimeters, the ratio is going to be 96 over 48, right? Which then simplifies to what? Uh oh, no way, no way, no way, no way. 2 over 1, which is the same as your original scale factor. Isn't that cool? Wow. Math and magic, right? Okay, so the scale factor for perimeter is 2 over 1, just as the scale factor of a side of a triangle. Which then now transitions us to this theorem right here. I'm going to start it. If two polygons are similar, then their perimeters are, sorry, are proportional to the scale factor. So essentially, the scale factor is not just proportional to the sides, but it's also proportional to the perimeters. Okay. So let's try some of these examples. I'm gonna leave one and two on your own right here. Okay, one and two. Uh, that's just like uh, one and two is from steps two and three from above okay so use steps two and three to do one and two and i will check that for homework tomorrow i mean um, mr mr win will check that for homework tomorrow for number three here okay so let's do number three together and so it reads if a b c d is similar to p q r s find the scale factor of a b c d to p q r s and the perimeter of each polygon. Okay, so let's break that down. We need to find the scale factor. We need to find the perimeter, okay, for each of the polygons. So this is pretty nice. Um, we have a rectangle. So just right now, I'm just going to label everything else that we know. This is going to be 20. This is 14. This is 25 up here. So right now, can I solve for the perimeter of, let's call this rectangle 1 and rectangle 2. So just by looking at it and adding it up, this perimeter is 68, all right, for perimeter 1. Okay, perimeter 2, we will solve for this, uh, and let's see how we're going to do that. So right now, let's just look at the scale factor, okay? We know that these figures are similar, so we're going from A, B, C, D to P, Q, R, S. Okay, so I'm going to take AB and compare it to the corresponding side, PQ. So uh, let's start. I'm going to do SF for scale factor. So the scale factor equals, it's going to be AB over PQ, which would equal 20 over 25, which simplifies to 4 over 5. Okay, so now we have the scale factor. Now, couldn't we just set up our proportion for our perimeter, right? This would be perimeter 1 over perimeter 2, right? So just going down here, 4 or 5 equals 68 over, let's call it perimeter 2. And then from here, we're going to cross multiply. And I shall have 4 times perimeter 2 equals. I believe it should be 340. So perimeter 2 should equal 85. And we solve for 